Hey everybody, this is Perch, uh, driving around, but in a different car. Uh, do, do you ever have this where you take your car in and it's like scheduled maintenance and everything and the guy's like, well, we're going to have to get you set up with a loan and you're like, ah, crap. I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm happy to kind of just wait there in the session or go out for a run or something while the car's in being worked on. I hate this, this concept of like, we're going to give you a car and then you go, because the, the child in me thinks I'm going to get this loaner car from the dealership and then immediately just go dukes a hazard it over some uh, ramps and other things. And, but I know I can't do that. So now I'm just annoyed. So I'm sitting here in this loaner car treating it like, you know, anyway, I, first world problems, folks. I, I acknowledge that. I, I, <laughs> I'm not, I am not denying it. The other day I was out trying to, one of my tires needed to be uh, uh, topped off. It just the, you know, low air pressure the cars yelling at me that you need to do this. And so I'm trying to get the uh, air in the tire, but the tire has a valve that is not standard. And so the normal places to get it filled up won't work. So now I'm trying to figure out where to go. And again, I'm, I'm complaining about this to a friend. They're like, hey, 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 fuck you. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> anyway, what is this video about? Well, the <laughs> my life is a mess. Um, this, this video is about why in the world. It's a question. Uh, a question I got saying, hey, you did this video on America Chavez sales numbers. And they're low like super low, the comic when it was all said and done. And it, what's funny is it's 12 issues. If you if you go by kind of the outrage and the videos and the amount of passion that people got over that comic, you would think that this was like a five year, 50 issue, 12 reboots kind of adventure. But no, it was 12 issues. That's it. Uh, Gabby Rivera, 12 and done, you know, which is in fairness, you know, for these days, quite a long run. You know, 12, 12 issues. <laughs> I'm back Back in the day, uh, that would be just a forgotten, nonsensical run. But 12 issues. When all was said and done, it was uh, right over 6,000 in sales. The trade paperback sales were terrible. Uh, people kept saying Scholastic is where all this, the money's at, but there was no Scholastic uh, for, for this particular comic. So who knows? Anyway, maybe uh, it, it just, even though we've been told that 6% was the average of digital sales, maybe... For this one comic, and just this one comic, it was like 600% sales in digital, and that's where all the money was made. Could be, could be, folks. It's it's all right there. Sure. Um, but the question is, hey, if it sold really, really low, 6,000 copies for the issue number 12, that's, that's crap. Why in the world, then, is Disney adapting it to a series? Clearly, people don't want this character. Well... What is the answer to that? Help me. Help me perch. People say, how, how, what, is the, what is the explanation? Well, the explanation is quite simple, actually. Uh, nobody who's doing this series cares about the comic at all. That is the answer. I, I can pretty much guarantee you, and I would love to actually have the hidden camera in the room of like Kevin Feige, who's like, all right, we need to get some properties here. We're going to do Disney Plus. We want some you know, relatively new characters, characters that we don't have wound up with licenses, other places, characters that are not our top characters, because we want our top character, like the X-Men. We're not going to do a Disney Plus series for the X-Men. We want a full-blown movie for that, Fantastic Four. Yep, that's uh, that's going to be a movie. Uh, we're wanting kind of the, the middle tier. We don't want, you know, somebody somebody's in there suggesting like, hey, how about, uh, you know, the the guy who dresses up like a frog, Frogman. How about we do Frogman? It's like, no, 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 you did too far. Too, too, too far. We don't want that low. We want kind of middle tier. And we want middle tier where we don't really think that, um, you know, we can make a billion dollars off of it. Somebody's like, well, I, you know, Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain Marvel, Disney was confident they could make a billion dollars off of it, and they did. Sorry. <laughs> I know that, that man, that triggers some people. I was on some show once, and I remember this guy got super, super pissed hearing that. I'm like, but it made a billion dollars. No, it's not. Disney cheated. They bought secret tickets to inflate the, like, all right. Uh, whatever you say, pal. Whatever, whatever you say. <laughs> but, uh, and I know there's some people who really hold on to that idea that Disney uh, went out and like bought like a billion dollars worth of theater tickets just to kind of prove that it was good. I, I'm, I, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you believe it, good for you, but you know, you're, you're in there with Earth is flat and uh, moon, you know, moon landing was fake kind of territory at that point. So, no, uh, not not D Disney buying a billion dollars of theater tickets. No, 
I, I guarantee somebody in the comments is going to be like, they didn't buy a billion dollars. The movie was going to make $980 million and they bought $20 million in order to top it off so they could do a press release about making it. I mean, blah, 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 sure, whatever you say. Anyway, um, the, why, why America Chavez? America Chavez fits in this nice sweet spot for Disney Plus where it's not a major character that they could do a full movie off of. It's not a complete crap character where they don't think there's, you know, they don't think anybody will appeal to this. Um, it's a younger character. It's a Latino character. And all of that just starts, you start checking the box, you know, it's like, oh, it's a young female Latino superhero character. All right. That's, 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 there you go. Just market it right up. We've got all the We've got all the things, you know, to, to put together to have a unique show that we can then say, look, we hey, will we'll apply for some awards. We'll do a marketing campaign like this is something like, you know, you've never seen her before and uh, Chica Power. We probably won't use that one. But I mean, just what, what you could just see them putting together the advertising marketing campaign around America Chavez. Now, what what they are going to have to do, and I've mentioned it before, is they're definitely going to have to redo the origin. They're not going to talk about how this girl has, you know, two moms from another parallel multiverse dimension that is somehow has Sotomayor University and they're not, they're not, you know, the, the grant, the abuela is a luchador wrestler. They're not going to do any of that. That's just that, that, that's not going to happen. But young Disney actress who's going to get superpowers and then be cute because she's got way too many powers and she's stronger than a lot of the men. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to do that. That, that completely fits Disney, but the key here, and I think this is what the, what, if you read comics, this is what may be difficult to digest. Nobody, nobody within Disney is paying attention to any of those comic numbers whatsoever. The decision to do America Chavez came from somebody took, you know, a picture of America Chavez Probably, um, you know, it just this, this handful of uh, cover images, likely not many of the cover images from the uh, from the Gabby Rivera 12 issue series, because quite a few of those images feature America Chavez's butt like uh, you, you don't realize it. But if you actually look at the 12 issues, like a lot of them are, you know, pretty much ass forward in, in that comic. They're going to go for something. The the new art for the new series, the American Chavez, born in the USA, and she's drawn in a you know looking younger. If you notice, and she's not angry. She's smiling, and uh, she's kind of leaping up to the air. And there's some kind of power light beams coming off of her. That's the image. That's like that's that's the one that Disney's be like, yep, that that fits the brand. That fits what we're doing. That's all they saw. Kevin Feige did not at any point sit down at his desk with a big stack of comics. Like, okay, I've got, I've got full killer here and, uh, here's America Chavez. And, um, here's some, uh, new universe stuff from, uh, from that time period. And, um, here's Hellcat. And which one of these am I going to make into a series? Hmm. Just got to kind of, kind of figure it out. Oh, this Gabby Rivera says she spins quite a yard. This is that, that didn't happen. Nobody read this comic. And in fact, like I said, I would love a hidden camera somewhere if somebody on the, you know, the set like handed out uh, copies of the uh, graphic novel, like the first America Chavez of the issue one through six to the, to the cast and the, the and like, Hey, here's some, if you want to know more about this character? Here you go. Maybe people are opening it up and they're getting, you know, America Chavez punching Hitler and then going to another dimension and, shouting out holy menstruation. I mean, yeah, that <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> I would love to, again, see the, the, the picture on the face of people like, what the is this? I, I guarantee you that's not happening. No, they're going for a very simple, Disney-friendly, young girl gets powers, crazy stuff happens, and she has to fight a villain, and it's so adorable and cute because that's what's going on. The comic is irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant. So to the question, hey, you know, how in the world, how in the world is somebody at Disney seeing a comic series? It's only selling 6,000 copies. They're not seeing that at all. One, nobody's looking at that. From past experience, I've now learned that, you know, a lot of people there, the publishers don't know how much these comics are selling anyway. I mean, for all we know, a lot of the editors think this thing sold 100,000 copies. Nobody knows. 
Uh, certainly not the editors. But anyway, uh, the, the, nobody's paying attention to that. They see the character. They see the IP. They see it fits nicely into checking the boxes of being something perfectly made for Disney+. Plus. It's not going to cannibalize you know, a place where they can actually go make you know, real money in the movies. And it's probably relatively cheap because we can mostly focus the whole comic on her and her family and learning she's got powers and how crazy that is. And she's probably got to hide the powers from her friends at high school. And, OMG, what if she gets caught? You know, she'll be ostracized. And, I mean, that's that's the that's the series we're, we're getting there. And so, to the answer, to, to, again, to answer the question, nobody cares. Nobody cares that the comic sold 6,000 copies and it frankly doesn't matter anyway uh, that's these things are wholly disconnected there's there's no connection between the two there's not that at no point and and frankly and maybe this is sad uh, they're not looking at the other way either nobody at uh, you know at Disney is going hey look at this comic it's selling a hundred thousand copies this one we, we should do this one that's not how they're making these decisions. They're making them purely on the fact of like, this will be good, a good movie property. This will sustain over time. This story translates well to a movie. It's where I kind of wonder, you know, there's been a lot of speculation from myself included that part of Hickman going on the X-Men part of the draw and probably where, you know, Marvel is able to dig up some more money for to, to afford him and to let him do the stuff he's done. Uh, you know, it, I wonder uh, how much that had to do with the idea that Hickman was going to create kind of characters, universe, and situations, much like he did for Avengers, which actually you know wound up making its way into Endgame and Infinity War. I mean, a, a lot of the stuff Hickman did was used there, the Black Order and Thanos, and kind of just there was he definitely helped inspire it. And I suspect that they're looking at Fantastic Four and they're looking at Hickman's run again at least some elements of that, of, uh, you know, playing into that too. But I, I, you know, with the X-Men, I'm, I'm curious, like, uh, do, does Feige want to have the X-Men be, you know, mutant plant zombies that deal drugs with pirate ships? I don't know. I mean, maybe, I mean, I, I kind of want them to make that movie cause it'd be crazy, but anyway, so that's the answer. Uh, these things are disconnected. America Chavez, it's uh, it's purely a a character, a bit of IP that they think will make a good movie. And the awkward part of it is going to be watching the comic kind of transform itself in order to align to whatever the movie is, uh, is or the Disney Plus series is going to wind up being. But anyway, there you go. There's your answer. Hope that helped. I doubt that it did. <laughs> like and subscribe. Get in touch with me in the description of the video. There's all that kind of stuff. And thanks for listening.